Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm James. I'm a second year medical student. And today we're going to ask the question, should you as a medical student, or if you're a prospective medical student on a gap year, whether a healthcare assistant job is the right thing to do, the pros and cons of it, the benefits, how to get involved, all those different things. There'll be timestamps in the description below so you can skip to the different parts that you are relevant to you. Uh, but let's just crack on with the content. Point number one, how to get involved. So different trusts will be different in different regions of the country. So just go onto their website and find the local hospital, go on their website and just see where the application is. There should be a page about healthcare assistance. You fill in an application form and then you might get invited to interview or different things like that, uh, depending on what trust it is. But you should have a English and a maths test as well alongside the interview. This is nothing to worry about and it just takes a short amount of time. People will usually get 100% of it. So after you've done those two tests, you, you'll then get a two week training period, which is paid, great. And uh, there's three different types of healthcare assistant that you could go for. Number one is just a healthcare assistant on a normal ward and you'll be assigned to a ward and just work there permanently. And there'll be a bank healthcare assistant, which is what I'm doing. And that's essentially, you can apply at any of the different positions throughout the hospital that have a vacancy. Uh, it'll be online, you can just book a shift and get onto any different ward through to from hepatology to rheumatology, anywhere like that, which gives you a nice good variety is what I do. And then there is also a theatre support worker. Um, it's a bit harder to get into, it's not ideal in medical school because there's a lot more training and they expect you to keep up a lot more with your training and things. So I wouldn't really recommend that one. But if you're a gap year student, then that might be a good thing to apply for if you've got the time um, to do the extra training. And if you've got the time to go through that and then you're looking into surgery and different surgery options, then that's a really good idea to get a flavour of that um, before medical school. So definitely go for that one if you're if you're thinking about that. So what does the job actually entail? What would you as a healthcare assistant be doing on the wards, in clinic, wherever you are in the hospital, what will you actually be doing? The major thing that we do is vital signs, so observations, that would be blood pressure, heart rate, uh, oxygen saturation, the respiratory rate and the temperature. And those will be done with a little blue machine that you go around. Depending on how often patients need them and how seriously ill they are, they'll need them separate times. If you're on a day clinic or a day ward, then you might have to do them more frequently. Uh, Post-surgery, there's lots of different times when you use it, but that is a key thing uh, and you'll, you'll be taken through with that. You'll also have moving and handling. And that is quite important in terms of moving patients from the bed to go to an MRI or a CT or an X-ray. So you use something called a pat slide, which is a sort of hard um, slide mat thing that you can transfer patients from one bed onto the other. Really important and you get all the training and safety for that. Moving patients in terms of if they're very physically disabled and they want to get out into their chair, you can use different equipment that the hospital provides, such as a hoist, or you have a SARA steady, which is essentially like a seat that they can, or wheels that you can wheel around. Um, and just sort of a, a frame that the patient uses, and you'll be able to ex you'll be expected to use those different devices in order to transfer patients and move patients th freely throughout the ward and their bay. The second part, we've got um, sort of washing patients. Now, this is a key part. As the ha as a healthcare assistant, you're assisting people's daily jobs, your daily routine, whether that being from brushing their teeth to helping them eat to washing them and ch changing them. So you'll get all the different uh, bedding and things within the a place on the ward. You'll have to make the beds, uh, you'll have to change uh, all the different sheets, and then you will have to uh, wash the patients as well if they can't get to the shower. Um, and that'll be often in the bed, and then sort of they'll teach you how to change the bed whilst the patient is already just sat on the bed if they can't move. So that's a key part of the training that you'll use all the time on the wards, not really in clinic or or day surgery or day cases, but mainly on the ward, you have to do that. Uh, there's also disposing of the linen and the, the waste products and the sort of bin bag things. So there's lots of different bags that you need to use for different things th throughout the ward. And there'll be something called a sluice or the dirty utility space where you can choose the different bottles for urination. So say if someone needs to go to the toilet, they can't get out of their bed, you can use a, a bottle. 
all the different bottles, how they're kept. You'd need a urine sample, how the different collection goes about and all the different bottles for that. And then the linen shoot, which is really fun in, in Adderbrook's Hospital where I work, you have a, a little contraption that sort of shoots down the, press it open, it shoots down the uh, linen down to the basement. Uh, so that's, that's quite cool. Now onto the positives and negatives, the benefits, slightly bad parts about the job. We'll start obviously with the positives. And there's a lot of positives that you can take from this job. Now, obviously, you get paid, and uh, especially if you're if you're travelling on your gap year, or if you're wanting to earn money throughout the summer, it's a great job just to get that income. They have you can do 12-hour shifts, so a long day. Obviously, you get a lot more money for that. You can also do early shifts, and you can do late shifts. Uh, usually, start from about early is from about 7:30 till two, and then late is two till you know eight. But then long days, a whole sort of 12, 13 hour shifts. Uh, I get paid nine pounds an hour for, for mine. You also get paid more on a Saturday and a Sunday or a bank holiday. So bank holiday is I think 80% pay rise on the Saturdays is about a third extra on top. So you, you can earn quite a lot of money if you work on the weekends. Now a very key part of this job is looking at the softer side of medicine. So not your science, not your anatomy, not your knowledge, but your softer side, your empathetic side towards patients. Because at the end of the day, you as a doctor are, are looking after patients and it's the effect of treatment, it's the effect of a surgical procedure or the clinical conditions that will affect the patient's life and the patient's ability to do things. And you as a healthcare assistant are talking to the patients, you're empathising with them. OSCEs will also come up in your medical school exams and this is the... Um, practical side that you get tested on. So vital signs and things like that could, could come up and that is a, a good way of pressing it. And your patient's manner and things like that that you've like saying about the empathetic side and the soft side of medicine is also um, marked as well in some of the other sections of patient communication. So getting that practice is good. If you're a gap year student then it's really good for your personal statement as well. So if you're a prospective student looking to go, to go into medicine, this gives you a, such a good idea and such a good understanding of what it's like treating patients and the tri patients that are coming in. With that, you can attend a variety of different, um, if you're a bank healthcare assistant, a variety of different wards and a variety of different settings throughout the hospital. So you get exposed to lots of different patients with lots of different conditions that you were learning about in your textbook but you won't actually see it often manifested unless you go on to a lot of placements. So this gives you an, a really good insight into what patients present with, and you'll be able to remember these conditions a lot better than you would have done having just looked at a book. Having a, a patient to, to uh, connect that learning with is really, really good, and a really good foundation for your learning as a doctor. Another great thing is that if you're a bank healthcare assistant, it's a zero hour contract, and what that means is you can book on shifts and you don't, there's no, you're not tied down to a contract that you have to say, right, you have to do this many hours this week. It's great for the summer because if we want to go traveling, you think, oh, I want to take out, I don't know, two weeks or so here or one week there. You don't need to ask, you just go. You just don't book a shift. And that's, it's, having that flexibility is really, really handy on, on the summer um, or even on gap year, it's ideal. You can just go somewhere for a bit, come back. With all these positive things, there are some negative things that you have to consider before applying for this job. Now, the major one that people often don't try and think about, but is always there if you're on a ward, especially. And this is the contact that you have with sputum, vomit, uh, feces, and urine. Uh, these patients might not be able to get out of bed. If they can't get out of bed, they need to go to the toilet at some point and they just do it in the bed. So you as a, your job will have to be sorting that out. Now, if you can't, if you can't deal with that, don't, don't, do not do this job because you will end up absolutely hating, it's usually in the morning, but you can get around it. So booking onto shifts at clinics or booking onto shifts at things like vascular access where they put in uh, pick lines will, will obviously avoid this, but also doing shifts later on. So maybe a two till eight shift, obviously people usually get changed in the morning, usually get washed in the morning. So you can avoid it. And also going on towards the aunt as high dependency like elderly, Will, will help. So not not everyone in hospital will like wee themselves in bed, but you you will reduce the risk of that happening if you don't like that. Having said that, as a doctor, as a foundation one, foundation two, you'll be asked to do DRAs and digital rectal exams. And if you can't really stomach that, then you need to practice at some point. So I guess you could sort of see this as a bit of practice. The final couple of things about the negative parts is that as a second year, I've been on placement quite a bit. 
and you get used to going to the doctor's ward rounds and being a lot involved with the doctors and when you see them around on ward rounds you feel like you sort of have to sort of want to go over there and sort of talk to them but obviously that's not really your job you can't really start sort of going off with your job and start talking to doctors for like an hour or something so having that restraint to just not go off and just start doing other things that you would do as a medical student is quite difficult and quite hard to get to grips with right so that is a brief overview about what a healthcare assistant job involves what it requires the positives and negatives i hope that helped and i hope that if you're a gap year student or if you're a first second year third year medical student or anything like that then that will give you an insight into what i do and the positives and negatives and give you a bit more of an informed decision about whether or not this is something for you uh, if you did like this video give it a like subscribe to the channel i'll be releasing more medically related videos at some point and some more of the other things as well. So keep stay tuned for that. Uh, but yeah, hope to see you in the next video.